We have made it into Morgan Hill, California. We got in yesterday. We're in our hotel this morning, about to go grab some breakfast, waiting on Jackie and Stacy to get in still. <laughs> they have not made it. They've had a crazy trip. I'm gonna let him explain that to you whenever, <laughs> whenever. How you doing? Good. They made us check our bags and I knew it was going to be a mistake. Yeah? Yeah. Because usually do the red thing, red tag thing. They usually give you the red tags. Oh no. They started white tagging everything. Uh. I was like, I have a bad feeling. It's like, it's like, I'm going to shine me your eyes. You grew up since the last time I saw you. Uh, <laughs> we did. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like an old lady. <laughs> Look how big you're getting. <laughs> What'd you do to grow up so bad? Um, eat a lot. <laughs> so we've been in California, Morgan Hill, California, me and my wife for the last couple of days. Friday night, we had an incredible time with Jackie Baker and Stacy. They led worship. We just did a small night of worship at Rich's Church, one church here in Morgan Hill. Um, this morning I will be speaking and I'll be talking about the importance of stillness in the Christian life and how the stillness is where we really hear from the Lord clearly from just being at a place of rest and being in a place where our hearts are quiet. And it's like John in Revelations, he writes that he was in fellowship with the Lord. It says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And then I heard the Lord speak, right? And so in the spirit, fellowshipping in the spirit, there's a place of stillness there where we are with him, with Christ. And on the Lord's day, representing a rest, meaning we were resting. John saying, I was fellowshipping with the Lord in a place of rest, meaning there was not a big activity going on, that there's not a big task that he was doing. He was just spending time with the Lord quietly. And that's where he gets the letters from the churches. So he hears the Lord and only when we hear the Lord can we turn to see him. And that's what happened next. He he turned to see the Lord and he fell down as if he were dead. Oh, that's not bad, but you can't see if that's <laughs> full line. So it could, it could, be, it could be going, right, I could fill it up a little more, but. I just don't see where it could be going though. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't either. But I did I hear don't it. see it wet anywhere is what I'm saying. I especially am happy that um, I did not have any messed up words in a certain song of mine. <laughs> I'm not going to say, I'm just going to leave it there. That's right. Cause that you'd mess but up I did it. practice it a little bit in my head before I sang it. And I was like, nailed it. No, it was good. Seriously. People were so hungry for the Lord's presence. And people were reverent for the Lord. You could see that there was a real honor that has been cultivated in people's hearts for the Lord's presence. Um, you, could, you can really tell when you leave people in worship if the scripture is something that they dwell on because it it just makes the worship so full and so rich. Just the real reverence for the Lord, and uh, you know that was that was the intent, just to come and gaze upon Him, you know, corporately. Uh, but the fact that when you spoke about the fear of the Lord, I think um, I think it was just spot on. I think that was just right, uh, even though it was short and, and sweet. I think it just uh, it, it just built on the, the reverence. And brought people even even to a place of just uh, lower, you know. So, yeah, no, I just think I think it was wonderful, and I'm looking forward to Sunday. You know? We spent some time singing about the blood of Jesus too. I think that that's that's something that the church these days I don't think spends enough time talking about and thinking about, and it helps people step over into freedom. 
and it, it it is the way that we have access to the Lord, the blood of Jesus. If if I been if I feel empty, if I feel completely poured out, I feel completely unworthy. How do I come to God? I come by the blood of Jesus. If I feel great and I've just preached to thousands and I've just ministered to the poor and I feel great about my life, I've never been better spiritually. How do I come to God? The blood of Jesus doesn't change. No, absolutely. And you know, it's like what you're saying. We talk about the fear of the Lord. Well, the fear of the Lord is really it's like the understand the revelation of the cross, and the finished work, the blood, the atonement paid. And so, uh, when we talked about that, when when a, a church or a people get the revelation of what that what that is, man, there's a reverence and an awe and a, a low, you know, a low place <laughs> that you get to, you know, where you're just abased and uh, to gaze upon the Lord, you know, and that's finding that place is man, that's a sweet spot. <laughs> take two, <laughs> because Bethany wanted to retake that. Oh, you were sitting on my hair. I was apparently <laughs> sitting on her hair. Did you see the message I sent? Yeah.